click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, we have seen what do you mean by the heat exchanger, what are its classification. Now for the sake of analysis, one need to understand few of the important parameters or phenomena such as falling factor. Now falling factor. What do you mean by the falling factor? Now this is basically as the name suggests, it is a factor that need to be considered over the period of time. In case of a heat exchanger, we know that there are single pass or multiple passes heat exchangers which are working for year and year long. If suppose these kind of heat exchangers keep on working for prolonged time, there might be a case that the internal diameter or the internal cross section area of a given pipe will get reduced due to the deposition of some of the particle due to the deposition of few of the particles that are passing through the fluid onto the inside surface of the pipe. So let us look at the reasons by which the scaling or the particle may get deposited to the inside of the pipe. So there are three main reasons. One is obviously the scaling that is the deposition caused by the impurities in the fluid. The fluid that we are using for the heat exchanger may not be pure enough. So whatever the depositions are there, those may get impinges on the inside surface of the pipe itself. As we can see from this diagram, so this green line indicates the inside of the pipe. Okay. And then this blue line indicates the reduction in the cross section area of the pipe. Now this is done due to the scaling of the various particles that are flowing through the pipe. Now what are the effects of the same? First of all let us understand what are the reasons for this kind of scaling. First one is obviously the deposition. Second one is the chemical reaction between the fluid and wall material. So there might be a case where the fluid and wall may not be compatible with each other. So they may get reacted and may form this kind of a compound. And third one is obviously rusting. So due to the rust formation also, we can have a small deposition and we can have a reduction in the cross section area. So what happens because of this? Because of this uh, resistance, thermal resistance is created due to this scaling. And now this resistance that is created, because of this we need to consider a factor that we call as a falling factor. So let us say this here, this is the falling resistance. This falling resistance is basically calculated by calculating the overall heat transfer for the falling or the fault heat transfer section and for the clean one. So we will have to find out the U value initially that is in the manufacturing state and then this can be found out in the maintenance state. So with this we can find out the overall resistance that is the falling resistance that need to be added for the further design. So from this if suppose the scaling occurs to the both side that is to the inner side of the pipe as well as to the outer side. In that case we will have to consider RFI and RFO and that need to be added to the overall resistance. So that is what that is how we can find out the overall resistance. Obviously we can see from this expression the total resistance is given as the resistance offered by the inner fluid that is 1 upon AI HI plus the falling resistance by the inner side plus the conductive resistance of the material itself that is the wall material. Then the falling resistance of the outer side and again the convective resistance of the outer fluid. So this way basically because of the falling factor these two parameters need to be added to the overall resistance. And obviously due to the increased resistance the heat transfer rate will get decreases because of the falling factor. So this is the actual diagram you can see from this actual diagram of heat exchanger. So many of these holes are basically blocked due to the depositions or the scaling that is there inside the fluid. Now this occur over the period of time. This does not occur very in a very short period of time. This may occur maybe in a period of month or few years. Now in this basically we talked about 
various falling factor for few of the fluids now this is only given for understanding the number of or the quantity of the falling factor the unit for this is given something like this here that is hm square degree celsius per kilocalorie now this is obviously this is a cgs unit now for this for fuel oil it is given as 1.024 for refrigerant liquid it is almost 0.1 and for diethanol solution it is 0.4 for gasoline or kerosene it is 0.2 for liquid gas oil it is 0.4 and heavy gas oil again it is 0.6 so what we can see is that only for the fuel oil it is more than one for rest of the it it varies from 0.1 to 0.6 now this here we talked about liquid similarly for the gases and vapor for the solvent vapor it is around 0.2 for air it is again it varies from 0.1 to 0.2 for the flue gases it varies from 0.2 to 0.6 and for the steam again it varies from 0.1 to 0.3 so we can see that for the gases and vapor the range is again between 0.1 to 0.6 so for liquid and for gases the range is almost same only except the fuel oil and for water based on the type of water that is is it a river water treated boiler feed water or the processed water based on that the value may get vary so in this topic we talked about the causes of the falling factor and the effect of the same Similarly, we talked about the quantity of the falling factor for various fluids. Now that is it in this topic. Thank you for watching this video. Please stay tuned with Ikeda and subscribe to Ikeda. Thank you.